Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So as I said in the last video I'm about to go off to university and I'm going to be doing adult nursing. So to do adult nursing in the UK you have to go through an interview but, so, but first I'm going to explain what the application process is like because people in America I know they do it differently. So in the UK we have this thing called UCAS and it's a website and it's what you sign up to and you go on there to make your choices and you upload your personal statement. So your personal statement has to be, it doesn't have to be 4,000 pounds, that's like the maximum. And I know mine at first was, a, I was going to say a bit over, but mine was a lot over. Just because I like to explain, but I had to stop. And then I was cutting too much out, so then I had to add more stuff and just... If you're in college and you're applying, like, the teacher's college in the UK is just the last years of high school for, like, anyone who's an American watching. So we call that college here. And then, or sixth form. And then the teachers would help you in what to put in. So I know when I've watched videos of Americans applying to college university, some of them have had, like, 13 choices. But in the UK, you're only allowed a maximum of five, unless I nearly got six just because I wasn't getting accepted to some of them, so I was panicking. And they said I could have an extra choice if I didn't have an offer. And when I was about to make a new application, I got an offer, so I couldn't do that in the end. But so you have to pay, which I think is a bit weird. You have to pay to apply to university, anyways, even though you're going to be paying after. But you know, you need a degree these days. <laughs> Plus, for what I was wanting to do, I needed one, anyways. But so. For one choice it's about £13 and then for five choices it's about £24 so you might as well apply for as many as you can. Especially if you're not going to interviews you might as well apply but with me I had to watch out where I was applying to. Like I kind of wanted to apply to Edinburgh but then I was thinking how am I going to get there plus my family was not really wanting us to move that far away. And in the end I didn't want to move, I'm still moving away like living away but I'm still living in the same area, in the same county in a way kind of give or take. So I couldn't decide between nursing and midwifery. I knew I always wanted to help people. I knew I always wanted to do something similar to that. And um, I heard that it was harder to get into midwifery so I thought I might as well take my chance and just apply for midwifery because I was originally, before I knew that you couldn't, I was going to apply for both but then your personal statement I couldn't say midwifery and nursing because then they're like oh you're not serious so my teacher said that but then they offered us it anyways like I'll explain that later um so I applied for midwifery first and I applied to Teesside North Rhea, the University of York Leeds University and UCLan which is the University of Central Lancashire Leeds was just bang out unsuccessful and you clan they said no we we don't think you're gonna do it for midwifery but we will offer you an interview for nursing adult nursing because there's in the uk there's also adult nursing ch child nursing learned disability nursing and mental health nursing i am missing out whereas i know in america i think you do it all together but in the uk you already like sp specialize as soon as you go to university so they give me adult nursing and um so i was like okay yeah because i was like thinking oh i wanted to do that anyways i might as well take the interview but for you clan it wasn't just a straightforward train i was gonna have to get on multiple which was just but it was a two on but like i needed to do it but i didn't actually end up doing it because so the day before the interview me and my mum were checking our train tickets and we realised, stupidly, we booked the train for Lancaster, not Lancashire. Easy, I think that's an easy mistake. But anyway, like, I wasn't planning on going to that one really anyways, it was just, I wanted the interview just as a wrap up, like, in case. So, also, the day before, this day when we found out, it was the York deadline for like saying yes to your interview so when I applied to York they said no to midwifery as well but yes to adult nursing so I said yes to the adult nursing 
but it was the day after the deadline that I have to reply to the email so I was panicking so I just went up and rang them and the woman who puts the interview times through and all that she said oh like you can still do it because she hasn't sent the letters out or anything so I just say call like literally if I could if I was a minute or ten later I might have not been able to get the interview because it was after the deadline but thankfully she was nice about it so York so I got the train to York at about six o'clock in the morning and then the interview was about eight or half eight and so I had to get up at like four or five o'clock in the morning and so when I got there I sat in the reception with very small amount of people like it was the smallest amount of like sat with for an interview so I was a bit like oh it's like a very small interview like I didn't know how it like went with York so she took us into a room and like more and more people came like I think I was like early because of me training on that and she got us to sign some forms and then she took our GCSE certificates of us and a passport photo which actually I forgot I needed one so in the train station I had to quickly get one and that was very embarrassing because that is very loud <laughs> when in like a train station early morning about getting your picture took and then so she took us in the room we took up she took our certificate she took um our passport photo she took our ID so like driving license or provisional or passport and more and more came in and you all everyone's in the same boat so you all kind of sit and talk it's quiet but at the same time you'll talk to the person next to you like every time I've gone to an interview I've made okay friends with the people next to us because you're all there alone there's I think there's been one time there's been two people who already know each other but the majority of you don't so after that she we all sat down once everyone was there and we had to watch a video on dementia actually all my interviews I think apart from one involved dementia a dementia video I'll talk about dementia because that's what everyone's focusing on at the minute and for being such a big thing and we don't know why or like we know a bit but not loads and there's no way of really stopping it and so we watched a video on that and we had we had to like move into a circle and there was about five lecturers teachers who said you know like watch two of yours and so like me and another person would have one lecturer and they would watch us for like what our opinions would be to see if we would engage in the group conversation discussion and so once you know someone's watching you obviously you like I'm shy and like probably in college I would never have talked that much but in the interview I was always making sure to get me point out to at least say one thing so they could say like I was going to talk about it I knew something about it and just even if you don't know much about the topic like you just say like how or oh, the nurse has to be like patient everyone's like it's a hard thing for the family like just something in the six C's so the six C's are caring, compassionate, competence, commitment, courage and communication. So I knew in all my interviews I highlighted one of them values just because that's what I knew they would be looking at. All my college lecturers told us to look up them. And so if you don't know much about the topic you could say about any of them involved in the topic because they don't expect you to go in knowing all the knowledge. like. There was some people who were sat there who had experience with their grandparents who had dementia and they knew all about it whereas I would sit there and I don't know anyone with dementia but I still knew a bit about what it was so I could say that but not as in depth but they don't expect that like not everyone knows someone with that so it's not to say who or who knows this who knows exactly what it is it's not like that and they're really understanding to be honest so then after that we had I think when we watched the video I can't remember if we wore up down or not I know in a different interview I did so then after that we had 
the maths test, which we were all extremely nervous about because I had a maths test at a different university. I'm, I'm just going to say Teesside. And that was probably harder than York's. And I thought York would have a harder maths test just because it's a Russell group, which is like the Ivy League, I think, kind of, of America. Like, it's one of the top universities. So I, I just thought it was going to be harder. And, but it was literally one question from a G, not even GCSE. I probably had this question when I was in year six. It's like, they give you a recipe of, say, how many eggs, how much flour. And then they want you to make that recipe for about twice as much. Or like, if the recipe is for six people, they want to make it for 18. Like, so you have to figure it out. And they give you loads of paper. They give us, they give you about three pieces of paper as well as the question sheet. And I just thought that's way too much paper. So I was panicking thinking there was more questions and I didn't notice them. But there wasn't, so that was, it was easy, the maths question to be honest. It was, I said it was a maths test, but it was one question, which one interview didn't even have that. I thought they all had to have that, but they don't. I know when I phoned UCLan, they said, no, we don't do a maths test. And I know Northumbria didn't have a maths test either. So I don't think this is common anymore. I thought it was, but it's not. So then after the maths test, they took us for individual interviews with the, was it with the people who uh, watched us with the discussion? I'm not sure, but with like another person. So there's two people in the room. So one woman come and got me. They're not all women, by the way. Just This was just mine. Um, she came and got me. We walked to a different building and I walked in. There was another woman sat there and we sat down, they sat across from me, it was formal but not formal, like it wasn't behind a desk, there was like a desk behind them just for like the paper and that. So there was two chairs and then I was just a chair in the middle of the room opposite them. And then there was a chair in the corner, which was for later. And um, I walked in, they had three or four questions to ask us and one of them was about what would you do if there was bullying in the workplace. Like, they don't want to hear, like you just say, oh I would snitch on them, like I would snitch, like no, like... They kind of want you to say that, but at the same time, they don't want you to be childish and just be like, oh, I'll tell the teacher. Like, no. That is, like, one of the answers that they want, but also, like, to see how you would handle, like, your maturity. So there was that. And then there was one question. I'm not sure what it was now, but I was struggling to answer it. So I was thinking, oh, I've messed that up because I couldn't answer it. But they always reassure you there's no wrong answer. It's just how much you can say. And I said a lot more on the other questions anyways. So after that... One of the the woman that was already in the room, she took off her shoes and went and sat on that chair that was in the corner. And I had to pretend she was a patient and put a dressing gown and slippers on her to see how well I would act with real life patients. Because if I was going to be like, oh, I can't touch her, she's a stranger, like they're going to be like, well, that's what you're applying to, you're going to be helping people. So I'm a shy person, obviously, I was panicking, but it's what I'm going to have to do. So when I picked up the dressing gown, obviously when I'm like carefully moving her and asking her if this is okay, asking her, just reassuring all the time and constantly asking her if like she can lean forward or she can lift up her hand if that's okay. Because you don't want to just ignore the patient because that's just going to make them not want to be with you or dread that when you're their nurse, if you get what I mean. And um, she would like groan as if she was like in pain or like numb or like rough so to make it more realistic but um at the time also me hair was thinking like I know you're not ill so this is a bit it was hard to do but um so I put the dressing gown and then I had to put the slippers on and they said I did that really well so I was like happy with that and then after that you just left the room and you went back to the room where everyone was sat and there was you had to wait until the end so thankfully my interview was near the end anyways so then you could have gone on a tour but we didn't choose to anyways because there was there wasn't that many who was going on the tour and it's like I couldn't have gone round to the accommodation where I really wanted to go because there was people already living them because there was I think it was about March May or something so like it was a school year and then I think she was just showing you the outside of places not you weren't actually going to go in so I thought it's pointless anyways and I didn't really have I don't know, just York University wasn't my university that I wanted to go to in a way. But I ended up, the day after, I got a place and I was obviously really happy. 
because it was a Worcester group, it was a really good university, but there's just something about that I didn't, it's just, I know people say York's north, but to me who lives Durham, Newcastle, that is, isn't York north, there was just something, I don't know, just some of the students I met who were already there, I just didn't feel comfortable, but that was just me, like, if that's, if it's not good for you, then don't go there, there's more universities. So now, I originally said I applied to midwifery and I've only said about nursing so far. So for Teesside University, I did end up getting an interview from midwifery and that was the first interview I ever went to before I got any replies from the other universities anyways. And oh, there was a lot of traffic on the morning when I was going to Teesside and I was about five, ten minutes late. But it was fine because they hadn't started anyways, they were all just sitting in the lecture hall. And I was panicking, so I had, I had to ring the university and they didn't answer our first and then they did. So I had to say how I was going to be late, which was fine, but I was panicking thinking, oh, they might just set me back now because I'm late and they think I can't be reliable. But it was literally, it was that much traffic and I think there'd been snow all weekend anyways. So I felt already nervous and panicky about it because before I even gone into the lecture hall, I literally walked past that lecture hall with another student who was already there and he was actually the student I got shown around by when I was late was actually one of my interviewers and he was he was really nice and he gave us the best feedback so I walked around the university to this other part to where I had to have my passport scanned had to give other forms because they give me a reference form because I had to get another reference from my teacher and then there was another form but I can't remember what it was about it was like I think it was just your details and then a passport for and then yeah GCSE certificates again so I gave all that to them and then they rushed us into the lecture hall and it was awkward but at the same time like I couldn't have done anything about it we let we set off in plenty of time and then the sat nav was taking us around little streets it was ridiculous <laughs> and so when we sat in there they gave us a little induction about the course and then we sat down and we did a maths test which before I went to the interview they give you a practice maths test so I had been practicing for ages and some of the questions was from like what I would have done in year eight year nine when I was 13 and I couldn't remember that maths some of it so I had to practice for ages and you had to get at least 12 out of 15 so it was kind of high but just because a lot of people hadn't done maths for a while either and um i passed that anyways because when i rang up late they said i did and um so we did the maths test i think you have 20 minutes i think to do that maths test and i think i finished a bit before that and i felt confident i don't know how many i got but i just know i passed and after that you sat there for a bit and then I think you were separated into two groups so my group straight after then had to go on the tour so the tour was really good and then but I had already been to an open day so I, like, I knew I really liked that university and we met some year one universe, university students who were doing midwifery already and I was actually one of the youngest because even though I've just finished college and it's like my time to go straight to university like for midwifery a lot of the ages for even nursing like uh, some of them could be in the 40s 30s 20s like so I was kind of young and that's one of the reasons I didn't accept just because if you haven't had a baby they don't want someone to be like if you get what I mean so you had to have either loads of experience in that kind of I just had experience in daycares and nurseries because I couldn't get into a hospital so those people who were already mothers or like had jobs in the healthcare so I was a bit set back by that part so then we sat down for a bit had talk of the year one midwives and then we got sent upstairs to the interview so at side, the interview isn't individual it's mini interview so you go into a room and it's kind of distracting when behind the interviewer there's a mannequin in the bed who's pregnant 
because you just think oh this is going to be out of my classroom but you have to stay focused and the mannequins kind of aren't they don't look real like as much as obviously they're not going to look real but some of them looked really old and um plasticky not they didn't have hair or like you know what i mean and um so i think there's about six or seven stations so the first station i went to like i'd never been to an interview ever so i was like i don't know if i should shake the hand i don't know so the first interview i had like this older man who was really quiet and he was asking about i think i, I know i mentioned about being set back because i have a speech problem and he was like oh so like he was oh the question was how did you get over something to succeed so like it was about like public speaking and how i couldn't because i was embarrassed of saying some things like me r's and w's if you haven't noticed and after that i shook his hand but he looked really shocked that i did it so after that i was like i'm not gonna shake anyone's hand i can't after that he looked really shocked like i don't think it was that formal but i'd never been to an interview so the next one i think was because some of them had a lecturer and then also a student midwife who was in the third year so the next one had that and they were like what would you pick to take to if you were trapped in a forest something like that so you have to explain why and then so it was like water and cards or a torch and i was like well you don't need the cards they're not for like you don't need them to survive and then I can't really remember every question now but then the next one was something like this isn't an order but now when I go around I know there was this woman who was interviewing us and she was like proper smiling at us and she was like I know what you're trying to say and when she said that I was like I'm not gonna get it because I'm not saying it the exact way they want it and she was like but I can't help you this is the first time I'm doing this and I'm like okay and then so after that I went to the boy who showed us around and we were talking about how I had midwifery free books and he was like well like it was more of like a friendly interview like we're like smiling like nodding at each other and I was like oh thank you and he was like oh no thank you so after he said that I was like right I'm in no <laughs> and um then I went to uh I have a feeling she was a nurse and she was in midwife. No, I think she used to be a nurse and then now she was a midwife. And the question was about if you saw a man stressed in a park and teenager shouting at him, what would you do? And like, I turned around and I was like, obviously, like, I can't shout at them because that's like not good for anyone. So I was just like, I would take him away from the situation, put him on a park bench or like sit him down, give him water if I had water, like just see if he's okay and then if needed, ring. 999 or 111 which is for like advice on what to do because you just want the best for him so after that we were all done and we could go home no then we went into like a debrief room so we got our GCSEs back because it was the actual certificates and you had to photocopy them but you had to give them both and then that's when we could go so after that interview I was really confident that I was going to get in for midwife BRT side because I got I got all the correct feedback like everyone was really confident smiling at us and then they I was like oh thank you and they were like no thank you like do you know what? like just giving you really good feedback and then I got an email they said they would I think it was March time they said we would get our emails and we got them like two weeks earlier so like I was panicking and they said if you get it earlier then that means you could have gotten straight away it was different things like that but i said i was unsuccessful so when i found out that I, i'm gonna admit i cried my eyes out because i really wanted to do midwifery i thought the interview went really good and they said like if you want to know why like ring because i missed the phone call because i don't like answering strangers numbers and um so i tried ringing them back they didn't answer because it was like a mobile number i think but in the same email they said that we still think you're capable of doing a health and social course just not midwifery and they offered us social work ODP which is operation department practitioner which actually sounded really interesting to me and then mental health nursing which I also considered before even applying to any of the universities learned disability nursing 
and there was another one occupational therapy so I wasn't really interested in any of them apart from ODP and mental health nursing but it was still I just thought I'm just accepting one of them and I don't really want to do it so when I replied to them I said either ODP or mental health nursing but is there not any places on adult nursing because I knew I'd been offered adult nursing by other universities before this so I thought I might as well take my chance and just ask and they said yeah there is but not until the January intake so that means I was going to be starting later if I had to have accommodation I was going to be moving in later I just didn't like that idea but I had to take because I wanted to do adult nursing like over any of the other choices but when I rang them up to ask like about me interview they said oh we'll get back to you so they got back to us and they said the people who like the interview team said there was nothing wrong with us there was they were impressed I was perfect and but they just ran out of places which I found a bit weak because I'm if I was that perfect then why wasn't I chosen because I'm sure there was interviews after me like days after so I was just a bit like sad but at the same time they said they would give you feedback and they didn't give us anything bad so I guess I did okay it was just the places because I think it's about 40 places and I know on the nursing course I'm about to go on to is like I'm in a group chat and there's already 105 of us so like midwifery's a very low course compared to that the final interview I had I, I'm sure it was my final I know I was in the last interview intake so there was no interviews after that was Northumbria so I also applied to Northumbria for midwifery and they also said no so I got a lot of no's to be honest but then yes is for nursing so they said no for midwifery but we would like to consider you for nursing you pretty much changed just send us a personal statement which was changing the word pretty much from midwifery to nursing which I said pretty much the same personal statement just a few things changed to nursing and I sent that in and it took ages for them to get back to us so I had to ring them and then as soon as I rang them the next day I got like an interview so I don't know if they just forgot because I emailed them my personal statement instead of having it on UCAS or what but I got an interview so I went to that and I was I wasn't one of the f I was not early I wasn't late so I went in like again I talked to people made some friends and I really wanted this like this university because I didn't want Teesside anymore because I was going to start later and I didn't want to move into accommodation with people who had been living there for since September anyways and York was just too far and I didn't really like it and to live there was a lot more expensive I know my cousin lives there but just to me I don't know it was not working out and plus I didn't know the area to be going to hospitals so I just preferred to have stayed more at home so I did the new personal statement got an interview went to the interview and we got there was some there for mental health nurse and actually one of the people he was boy one of the people like one of the boys who was there for mental health nurse and was also at York on the same day and um he even said that too was at the York interview oh no yet yeah, no the York interview was the last one because we saw it each at North and we so the other way around so we got separated from adult adult nursing to mental health nursing so we went upstairs went into this room watched a video again about dementia and we had to do a writing assessment on it because there was no maths test in Northumbria and we had to write down what was good about the nursing and what was bad what could have been better what did you notice and so I did that it was just I don't think there was anything like bad in the video like when she said all oh, right what's but that's bad I thought it was gonna be like something really like noticeable like what the nurse was doing but there was nothing I think it was just like saying oh she could have asked him like she could have said something just simple things like that which probably wasn't even an answer but anyways I must have done fine on me writing assessment and I included some of their six A's again and I noticed like I didn't think I've wrote a lot I'm sure you had like 10 minutes but it seemed like two minutes <laughs> to write it and like other people were saying oh I didn't write that much and I was thinking I wrote loads 
but like I said, I explain that, and I actually wrote that fast. Me handwriting was really messy, and then we got different folders for which group you were in. So I was in a group of one of the girls and extras, and we then went to another room and got separated into them group. So it was a group of five. So we went into a classroom and sat around a table with two nurses. I know definitely one of them was a nurse. I think the other one might have been a nurse, but now a teacher. And they sat across from us and at the table and they gave us topics to talk about with some A3 paper and we had to, I know only one person like wrote, but as long as we all spoke, it was fine. And they were watching us speak about like to, uh, they were watching us discuss about depression so it was about dementia just different healthcare stuff and I know two of them who I was with they were older again I was I think I was the youngest so there was a girl who was younger but there was two that were older and they had already a job in the healthcare sector so they knew a lot and they could say their stories oh, three of them I think had I think three of them actually had healthcare jobs so I was thinking oh I'm up against people who's already got jobs but then I found out later that apparently I wasn't up I'm not up against the older ones who were in access courses I think I don't know why I don't know if that's true but after that I felt confident we talked we had to introduce ourselves it was fine and then we went out into the reception well kind of reception part it was like the reception of that floor and we had to wait for our individual interview and that took a while to get through all that so once he called me up i went in it was a bit more formal sitting across the table and the it was the first time like york never mentioned about me applying to midwifery but the girls who i was also in the other interview with had already applied to midwifery as well so there was a few of us and they mentioned how i applied first to midwifery so I was thinking oh they're not going to give us a place because I applied for a different course and they were like oh you're young like you can come back if you really want to do midwifery and that like I explained do midwifery next year if that's really what you wanted to do and I was thinking well like I just pretty much came out and said to them like I couldn't decide between midwifery and nursing anyways so like having a chance to experience both is really good and I've and like committed I said the C word commitment and committed to being on like a nursing course because now like I'm really excited to start and I think now when I look back at like midwifery is more for people who's already got babies or if you're in midwife and you haven't got kids like that was just the impression I got from all my teachers were telling us some lecturers were telling us like most of them are people who already have kids or in the healthcare sector so and I thought I, after like I don't think I will but after nursing you can go on to do a midwifery on a shorter course but I probably won't I don't know and I said that to them like I'm committed to nursing and they smiled and they asked us another question and then I got sent like out like that was it that was the end and then I think it took a week and then I had a place at North and they give us a place and I remember jumping up and down thinking like I've got it like that's it because I already knew like even though I had to get the grades I already knew I was in because I do BTEC applied science which means I pretty much know my grades all year round I don't do exams it's just assignments so I, I get to know my grade of each assignment so like I knew I was heading for like way over the, the actual grade marks I think the grade marks were like DDM which is A, B, B and I actually got A star, A star, A star so like I got way over like the grades requirements so it's now past 15th of august which is a like, the a levels like grade day results day even grade day. and i got an email and went on ucas and me place has been confirmed it's unconditional i'm gone i just had to send me gcse's off so now i'm just waiting for my timetable and to move so just to clarify the questions that you get asked is just it's just scenarios and they want to see how you react if you're going to be caring if you're going to be i mean if you're going to be ruthless like no you're not gonna you're not gonna get in like if i just turned around and said with that question about the old man in the park and the kids shouting at him if i just turned around and was like 
or I'd shout at them, they're not going to, they're going to be like, well, that's not helping anyone, why would you do that? You can't cope with stress in a hospital of getting verbal abuse, like, that, nurses do get that, anywhere in a workplace gets that, so, it's just all the questions that you get are scenarios, and you have to remember the six C's, and just ask questions, but I think I barely asked any, like, I couldn't remember by the end, or the answered all the questions already, but I don't think that really matters because I, I still got in and so in the end my first choice was obviously Northumbria but I did turn down York University just because I didn't think that was for me so I took my second choice as Tayside, my insurance choice but I didn't really want to go there but I already knew I was in Northumbria like I said because I do BTEC, I know my grades all year round so I was confident and I got in so thank you for watching my video and I hope if you want to do nursing or major if you're something in healthcare that this video will help because I know before my interviews I was looking for videos that explained exactly what happened on them days. I know it's not probably exact all the questions that I got because it was it's now nearly September or it might be September when this is up it probably will be. And I did all these in like March, April, May. So I can't remember exactly all the questions that I got given. But at the same time, they're not the same. And after the interview, they tell you, oh, don't tell anyone. Because then you're giving them more of a chance. Like, not that I'm giving you more of a chance. But just... So I, I forgot about the question straight away. Because they tell you, like, don't tell anyone. It's an interview. So I hope you enjoy. And I'll be back with more videos soon.